At age 14, I dropped out of high school, headed out to sea. I was working at the height of industrialized fishing, so our boats were ripping up entire ecosystems with our trawls, using ever more efficient technologies to chase fewer and fewer fish further and further out to sea. The reason I shifted and sort of my, I, I adopted a different view of what was happening out in the ocean was that uh, while I was in the Bering Sea, the cod stocks crashed back in Newfoundland and then all, all up and down the East Coast. And that's when sort of the search for sustainability started. I had to figure out essentially a strategy of resiliency and adaptation to these new times. Dr. Charlie Yarish at University of Connecticut, who's one of the world's experts on uh, growing seaweed. And, and I took a lot of his research and embedded it in my farm. And that's how we got to this sort of 3D model. Kelp are just very beautiful organisms. They have a lot of different uses besides being uh, important for uh, ecosystems and biological diversity. They also uh, have a very good economic value. It's a win-win, just imagine. It's a very effective carbon sink. Nitrogen is sequestered, phosphorus is gonna be sequestered there, and so we're doing something that's good for the environment. And also, you're producing a, a product, especially for human consumption, that really tastes good. It's Saturday morning, and we're off to one of the restaurants and chefs that I work really closely with, um, Chef Dave Santos at Laurel's, which is down in the West Village. I've been working with um, Dave for years on different kinds of kelp dishes, seaweed dishes. As soon as like chefs start doing something, it kind of becomes popular and it's you know just rolls down and becomes this really big trend. As people really start playing and, and, and exploring you know, ingredients, you'll start to see it in just your regular grocery store. I think the proof is in the science of it, you know, and if it has all these vitamins, minerals, benefits, it just makes sense, you know, it makes sense. And not to mention the environmental effects that it has are, are so beneficial on top of that already. I, mean, it, I think it's a no-brainer that it should be the next superfood. One mistake that did not The goal of the Yale Sustainable Food Project is to produce food literate leaders, to show people what it's like to actually grow food so they can bring that forward in whatever they go do. And the farm is sort of the learning space for students to come and see how food is actually grown and get their hands dirty. The kelp, it's in a solution. We spray it on a lot of our seedlings when we first put them in the ground, um, and it, it provides them with the phosphorus and the nitrogen and other micronutrients that they may need to grow. So the idea is really to close the nitrogen loop. So um, I'm growing kelp in Long Island Sound, soaking up nitrogen, then taking and it comes back here to the Yale farm, gets used to grow all these wonderful vegetables, and then that nitrogen makes its way back into Long Island Sound. And we really are creating a bridge between land-based farming and sea-based farming. We need a lot of different strategies and need to paste together um, sort of a massive solution, but our uh, 3D farming method, I think, is one piece of that.
what's happened over the years is my oysters and my seaweeds now have really um, taught me a lot about um, how we need to change our relationship to the oceans. There are elegant solutions out there. My job is to uh, figure out what Mother Nature has created already um, and grow those. So hundreds of millions of years ago, she created these two technologies that are stunning that mitigate our harm in terms of climate change, in terms of overfishing, in terms of nitrogen pollution, a seaweed and shellfish. I use those technologies to help mitigate these you know, huge challenges we face and also at the same time, you know, help, help create jobs and feed the, feed the world.